Now, continuing in the same half brain will travel vein, we come to our finalist representing Switzerland. Now, I say representing because their 2012 champion wasn't from Switzerland, nor was their 2013 winner, and they're clearly on a bit of a Swiss roll because their 2014 champ is the quite conspicuously Scottish Jennifer Fowley. Thank you for the groans. Uh, now, having originally got a physics degree from St Andrews, she's now studying in Geneva, which is where she entered Fame Lab and won. Jennifer's used to cramming a lot into not much space. Her PhD is in condensed matter physics, but how good is she at cramming a lot into not much time? We should have a clear idea after 180 Swiss time seconds with Jennifer Fowley. <laughs> Charlie, he's a newborn cheetah, and he was born with his beautiful coat. When he gets older, these spots will help him to stalk his prey without being seen. They are an evolutionary advantage. So we know why he has spots, but how? How do the colors know where to arrange themselves? The reason is not biological, it's mathematical. And it was a mathematician who first actually studied this. The father of computer science, Alan Turing. Since studying pattern formation directly is actually very difficult, Turing suggested a theory. He said, let's assume that there are two chemicals, one that makes skin light and one that makes skin dark. These two chemicals influence each other. They are in competition and they diffuse over the skin at different rates. Um, yeah, and um, this in mathematics is expressed as, I forget the name of this, name, of this um, equation, as a nonlinear partial parabolic differential equation, otherwise known as a very tricky equation. Yeah. And um, Turing was a genius. So he took this one equation of two interacting chemicals and realized that it can produce all the patterns known in nature. In fact, um, the pattern type depends only upon the surface area of the skin. So, if you have a very small area of skin, there is no pattern. Same for a very large area of skin. For small-ish areas, there are blotches, medium stripes, and large spots. In fact, the mathematics of this is very similar to the maths behind music. When you hear the note from a drum, it depends upon the size of the drum skin and the area which there is for a wave to form. And it's the same. In fact, now you may be able to tell me why Charlie has stripes on his tail. Because his tail is smaller than the rest of his body. The rest of his body gets spots. This is also the reason why there are no animals which have a stripy body and a spotted tail. <laughs> now, why then is the tiger stripy when it's bigger than a cheetah? Well, you have to realize that not all animals get their coat patterns at the same stage of embryo development. The tiger embryo would have been smaller than the cheetah when it got its pattern, so it developed stripes. And then it grew up to be bigger than the cheetah, um, but it still has stripes. And this is great, I think. So Turing's prediction managed to replicate reality. His theory was, it's, it's, what, it's what we see in the animal world. And this is, really, this is really cool. This is what I really like about mathematics. Because this abstract equation that I always forget the name of actually does reflect reality. And this just goes to show that the beauty of mathematics is more than skin deep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating r relationship between mathematics and natural phenomena, and Turing was deeply fascinated by this subject. You may be aware that around uh, the time that Alan Turing was studying this phenomena, another mathematician in America called John van Neumann came up with the idea of cellular automata. Uh, are your, can you tell us a little bit about that and how those um, automata can replicate nature in terms of mathematics? No, I'm sorry. I'm actually just really passionate about Alan Turing. <laughs> okay, okay. So you're, you're, <laughs> a, Neumann, you're a Turing girl. Neumann did a lot of cool stuff, <laughs> but no, I'm sorry. I don't know about that. Okay. No Sounds worries. interesting, though. Well, um, Alan, Alan Turing, of course, it being uh, sort of celebrated, I think was last year was the... Uh, I can't even remember what the, the occasion was, but anyway... Th th 
Alan, Alan Turing also, uh, you mentioned he was the father of, of, uh, of computing. Do you, do you know what his contribution was to oh, yeah, yeah. I computer mean, science? I mean, there, in, in computer science, there is this thing called a Turing machine, which when he came up with this, it was just a completely theoretical idea. And now it is actually the basis of all modern digital computers. It is the model on which our computers work. And, and he was also uh, really active in, in code breaking as well. That's, that's what he's clearly famous that's for among the wider public, for. but yes, yeah. as the father of, of computing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do, you have any? Um, do you know what the, biologically, do you know what um, actually produces the colours in the, in the coat of the cheetah? I, I, I do not, because neither do the biologists. <laughs> the pattern formation actually happens in a very, very narrow time window when the, the embryo is only a few weeks old. Um, so to study this, you would actually have to get a pregnant, a pregnant animal and cut it open. And <laughs> but yeah, it's not an ethical study, so nobody no, really knows, no. okay? But there, are, there have been suggestions that um, Turing's model seems to be correct, that there are two, two chemicals, an activator and an inhibitor, um, which um, activate and inhibit the production of melanin in the, uh, in the skin cells. Thank you. So it's, it could not, be right. it's not fair for Jennifer to know if the biologists don't know yeah. either. <laughs> <laughs> Applying the Turing test to wildlife, Jennifer Fowley.